Hi, this is Joe from Brain Buffet. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use an opacity mask to hide unwanted elements in a blue screenshot. I'm using an example from my Brain Buffet course on Premiere Pro, which I created to prepare students for their Adobe Certified Associate exam. Now let's do that blue screen instead of a green screen. It's just going to be blue. And that one is going to require an opacity mask. So I thought that would be a, a cool thing to show you how to do. So let's let's put that here at the end during the conclusion. Looks like I need to stretch that out. It's probably a little bit lower resolution clip. So remember, you can double click on it and just zoink, stretch it out. Or easier way, right click, set to frame size. Alrighty, let's grab the blue screen thing. I think it's BS not your ordinary. So let's double click on that. Set your end point right before I start talking and the out point at the end and then drag it down here onto the timeline. I'm going to have it right here at the beginning of the conclusion. Actually, maybe I'll have it right in the middle. It really doesn't matter. All right. So with this clip selected, let's come here to the effect controls and I'm just going to for now, we're going to collapse a couple of these things. And really, I want to start with the opacity. And you'll notice that I stay here inside of the blue area here. So we need to get rid of the green. We need to get rid of this black area, this black edge there. Uh, we just don't want to get rid of me. So this is an opacity mask and every single clip. If I click on any of these clips, you'll notice it says opacity. So they all have an opacity mask by default now with Premiere Pro, I don't know when they brought that in, probably 2015 or something like that, or maybe even earlier. So if you twirl open this opacity mask, you have three options. We can make an ellipse mask, a rectangle mask, or use the free pen. And I think the free pen will work the best. So let me, yeah, I really, I stay pretty compact. Make sure your actor's not moving around a lot. Okay, so let's try the, the pen tool. So I'm gonna click on the pen tool and I'm gonna click down here this edge and just kind of come up and notice I'm just single clicking. If you click and drag, you can create a curve. I don't really need that. I'm going to click right down here at the bottom and then I'm going to come over and close it by clicking on the first one and voila. Now you can see I, I kind of didn't do a very good job with this one. So I'm going to just stretch it down. I'm going to stretch this down, make sure I've got that whole thing covered. So you could see I've really quickly and easily, I got rid of all the other junk, all the bad stuff. So you're ready to get started. And now I'll, all I have to do is worry about blue screening or getting rid of this color right here. So if you're shooting on a green, screen and you have a, an outlet on the wall or something like that. As long as your character doesn't go in front of it, it's really easy to use an opacity mask. Now you see, as soon as I created the mask, it says mask one right here. And if you don't like the mask, you can just click on it and press delete. I'm going to undo that because I did like it. You can feather it. See how it's softening the edges right there. I don't actually want to feather it, but you can expand it. You can, you have all these different options right here in your masks. You can even animate it over time, which is really cool. And there's lots of good tutorials on the internet for that. You're not going to have to animate a mask over time. That's not one of the objectives. So, alrighty, here we go. Let's add the ultra key though. So let's go back to effects and type in ultra, ultra. There we go. We'll throw it on there. Grab your eyedropper, click on it. Remember, oh, and this is great. You can see the actual where the mask is not working very well. So remember, I like to go to alpha and you can see it right there. So either change this to aggressive. Wow. Okay. I'm done. I'm not going to go any further because aggressive is really doing a great job. You can see here in my chest, the bird from the Seahawks is not perfect, but, and that's because it's blue and the background was blue but you can see that really helped this area out a lot. Okay, so, and I think we really, since we did it with the other one, we really should animate me on. So I'm gonna actually stretch this out a little bit more, give myself a little bit of space to animate in, twirl this closed, open motion up, do position, and really this time maybe I'll have me fly in from the left. So I'll just zoink me off here, hold shift down to keep it straight. Okay, let's see how that looks. It's a little too slow, too slow. So remember, if you move these keyframes closer, there we go. 
looking good. I encourage you to learn how to use After Effects. That's actually the tool I'd prefer to be using right now for any of this kind of animation, but it's good to know how to do it in Premiere Pro. And if you're in a hurry, this is what I'll use. Take the time, practice that animating that blur, maybe on the conclusion, just for fun. So now you know how to work with opacity masks. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development and click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.